Good morning, ladies. We're going to get started on time. Week two and we're on time. Come on, that's a victory, right? All right. Hey, I'm super excited. Today's a special day uh, because we get to just basically do a small group connect. But before we get into things, I'm just going to take a moment to pray. So let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much that we get to be here this morning, that we have the privilege of gathering, that we can be in community to worship and honor you and glorify you. Father, we thank you that you have reason for our stories to be crossing even this morning in this room, that you have purpose for each small group that you've put together, that there's purpose and reason that these women are going to be sharing community together every week. And so, Father, we pray your hand on these small groups. We ask that your spirit would be moving, that you would renew our hearts, that you would implant truth in our minds, and that we would be deeply rooted in your love as we gather together. Lord, we do ask, as each woman is coming here this morning and they have different things on their minds and hearts and they have different feelings about being part of a small group some may be anxious because they don't know who they're going to be with some may be super excited Um, we just recognize there's a whole spectrum of feelings and emotions we ask that you would meet each person in that and that you would remind them of the work you want to do And so, Father, again, we are just so grateful that we get to gather in these small groups. We're so grateful that you're with us. We're so grateful that we can trust that you're at work here. And so we pray this in your name. Amen. Come on in, ladies. (laughs) All right. So I'm going to actually ask you guys, just as a way to set our minds and hearts this morning, to turn to page 13 in your study guide. And if you were able to do your homework, which, again, we're going to keep encouraging that, um, this week you actually sat a little bit with this passage in Ephesians and had some time to think about it. But I'm going to read it now. And what's interesting is this is, a, this is a prayer that Paul has for the Ephesian church. And when I think about how we pray for one another and when we pray for small groups and things like this, I think what better to go back to a prayer that Paul had for the church and just pray that for us. And so I'm going to read this, and then we'll just chat about it a little bit. Ephesians 3, 16 through 19. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. I just want to take a moment, and I'm going to try to do as many interactive things as possible, even though it's a large group. What are some things that are standing out from you from this prayer? Christ's love. It's, it's throughout the prayer. The power of the Holy Spirit. It talks about the power, living out of that power a couple times. That Christ can dwell in our hearts. And it's interesting, actually, Karina, I will say that when I was preparing the study guide, I was so moved by something I had read, which was like, you're reading about Jesus and the experience people had with Jesus, and that Jesus is living inside us. And it even said, maybe it's even more significant than being face-to-face with him to have him living in us. And I was like, oh, man, that felt really powerful. And so what we want to be, what we want to be doing is that, that we want to be acknowledging when our small groups, when we're gathering, that he dwells in us, this powerful Jesus that we'll be talking about. What else? 
rooted and established in love. And when I think about our small groups, again, if we can be rooted and established in love, it will transform how we engage with one another. Together with all the Lord's people, and here we are, though no men, we'll just be women. (laughs) All the Lord's female people. (laughs) I love it. Anything else? That we can have power. And that that power is strengthening us. Um, And so I think when I talked about last week how we're all feeling depleted, do we not want to be strengthened? And it's the power of the spirit that strengthens us, not these other things that we tend to look to. So that said, as I was thinking about these small groups and us meeting together in small groups, how amazing if this prayer could shape our time together in our small groups that we remember what we're about and why we're here, and that the Spirit is at work, strengthening us, giving us power, and rooting us in love. So I'm going to talk a little bit. I hate to do this. I do this every year. So this is, I feel like sometimes I'm just pounding the same drum. But I'm going to talk about what makes for a healthy small group this morning before we break into small groups. The reason being, I think it's really important that we're always reminded of our role in a small group and how that plays out. So we're going to start out by talking about you and your small group. As we just said from this prayer, we want to make love primary. When we come, we want to be thinking about how do we love, not necessarily how do I get loved, if that makes sense. It's a total paradigm shift. I think it can be very easy to come with a self-focus, like how am I going to experience love? But I would challenge you to think about, how do I love? How do I make love primary? And if we're all doing that, we're all going to experience that love. But we want to be women who are making love primary. Be kind, be honest, be humble. Look out for the needs of others, as we talked about last week. And then secondly, be who you are. I actually think there can be a real challenge in Christian community to think you have to say the right thing even if it's not what you actually think or to, um, to look a certain way even if it's not how you actually look. That does a disservice not only to yourself but to the people around you. We want to be real with one another. So be who you actually are. If you don't understand something, then say, I don't get this. If you um, are experiencing... Um, yeah, not, yeah, and don't be, sorry, I'm j- jumping around, but don't be who you wish you were either. Because we all have people we wish we were, right? <laughs> I wish I was a little bit more X, or just be who you actually are. Um, and th- that, um, that means you're not trying to be the most powerful or knowledgeable person in the room. You're not trying to display something. You're just going to be who you are. Um, and remember, you aren't your ideas, This is actually a tough one. If you're sharing an idea and somebody disagrees with you, it doesn't mean they don't love you. It just means that they may not have the same idea. So don't tie yourself to your ideas, um, but just, yeah, be who you are. All right, say what you actually think. (laughs) Um, And that's part of being who you are, but not what sounds smart or not what's the right answer. You know that um, Sunday school thing where they're they're talking about a squirrel and they say, what is it? And the, the kids are like, Jesus when they're talking about a bushy tail and all this stuff, and it's like, no, 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 it's a squirrel. Like, you don't have to give Jesus as the answer. (laughs) So we want to actually not just try to sound smart and not just try to give the right answer. We want to actually express what's on our minds and hearts and what's real there. Um, And remember that your honest answers matter. Like, you bringing who, yourself, who you actually are, it matters. And our hope is that these small groups are a place where you experience that that matters, that you are cared for and loved, and that what you say and think matters. Um, and then lastly, stick to the topic at hand. It can be really hard when somebody's like, going off on a bunny trail when we were just in this really rich thing that everybody was in, and then you're like, Woo! So just try to stick with the topic at hand. Um, And that doesn't mean you obviously, we're sharing life together, so those things can happen. But just be mindful of the fact that if you're on a path together, don't start taking it on a totally different path. That can be hard for the group. Um, Stick to the common text, to the reflective questions, those types of things. I want to remind you of what our groups are not, okay? Your group is not designed to be just a place to come and chat. We women love to chat. 
but this is um, a different place than all the other places you are experiencing as women. You can do that anywhere, right? Go chat out on the patio, or, but this, for the small group, it's not designed to be a chat. It's also not designed to be a, a, a lecture, which would be a one-sided dialogue where somebody's just expressing all sorts of things and kind of lecturing the rest of the group. Um, the truth needs to be discovered and not fed. Does that make sense? So we have to discover it together, not just feed the truth to one another. And that's a difference. It's not a debate. And boy, can it tend to feel that, like that sometimes. When two people disagree, it's not a desire for somebody to try to win. We're not trying to win. And that's what a debate is. Um, it should be a, co a posture of collaboration together as we're seeking to understand God's word and not a posture of combat. Collaboration, not combat. All right. It's also not a therapy session. Now, we're talking about how we want people bringing them re their real selves, and we want to be a place where we can do that. But if the whole time ends up being just therapy for somebody, um, then we might be missing the boat. Now, that can happen on one-offs, because sometimes there are very severe things happening in people's lives, and I think we should minister to that moment. But in general, uh, our small groups aren't intended to be a therapy session. Um, we do want to seek healing, but we want to seek healing through the truth. And so the truth needs to be uh, primary. And the truth will open wounds, right? When we're talking about the truth, it will open up our wounds. So we want to be a place where we can do that. But again, we're pointing people back to the truth. All right. It's not just a meeting where we're seeking a shared action or trying to come up with uh, something we're going to move together on. Um, and it's also not an appeal. It's not try, trying to get someone to share the answer without doing the work. So you're not appealing to somebody just trying to get them um, to share the answer. Okay, so that's what it's not. So what are we trying to accomplish in these small groups? It's designed to be a group of women committed to seeking truth together with the desire for God to shape and transform our lives. That's why we're gathering we want to be seeking truth together, and we want to together be asking God to transform our lives through that truth. So that's what it's designed to be. And I'm just going to share really quickly a couple um, ground rules for great groups. And I actually gave these to you this year. So you should, if you didn't get one on the way in, did anybody not get one? Somebody will come bring you one. Oh, a couple people. Actually, Claire, would you go on that chair right behind you? There are, yep. Yeah. Could you raise your hand again if you didn't get this? Because we want to make sure you have it. And then outside, I see you out there, even though I don't see you. Yvette has them. She'll be passing them out. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Tammy. So just as a reminder, there will sometimes be things on the chair when you walk in. So you might look there and just see. But we can always distribute this way, too. No problem. OK, so ground rules for great groups. Um, and the reason I'm passing this out to you is I actually think I really want you guys to see this. <laughs> um, and I actually want you to say, yeah, I'm, I'm committed to to trying to do this. Um, we're not going to be perfect, but I'm committed to these things. So first thing is commit to the group. Uh, if you can't commit to the group and being present, it actually makes it hard for the rest of the group. You can have somebody sharing the deep parts of their soul, and you're not there for two weeks, and then you come back, and it's like, do I reshare? How do I invite this person back in? It just gets hard. Now, obviously, things come up. We have things happening. We get all of that, but generally, be somebody who's committed to your group because it makes a difference. Um, and remember that you're committing to loving and serving, not to consuming. So you're committing when you commit to come and love and care and not just consume from the group. 
You're also committing to expressing concerns if someone doesn't s something doesn't sit well with you. So we're committing to actually being in real relationship with one another, where if we're struggling with something, we're actually going to share that or bring it up in a way that is loving and caring. So it's real relationship we're committing to. We ask that you prote protect confidentiality. Um, what is shared in the group needs to stay in the group. And I know it's very easy to go home and share with a spouse or... Um, with another friend. Um, unless explicit permission is given to do that, we actually ask that you keep confidential com confidentiality in your group. I will say that I do ask the group leaders to fill me in if there's something significant going on just so that I can come alongside people. Um, but I usually ask them to ask the person first if that's okay as well. So, but confidentiality is really important to helping people feel safe. Last, or not last, huh, sorry. Um, avoid harmful behaviors. Okay, this is a really big one. Don't give advice unless advice is asked for. I don't know if you guys have experienced, I'm sure you've experienced this. You share something, and you're just kind of sharing your heart, and suddenly somebody's trying to fix it. It's like, oh, wait, wait, wait. No, I was just kind of sharing what's going on in my soul. And when you try to fix it, it actually makes me feel like what I'm feeling isn't okay. And so we want to be able to not be advice givers unless that's been asked for. Don't try to fix people. It's really painful. Um, as somebody who's experienced uh, significant grief, um, it's very hard when I've been sharing sorrowful things and I feel like people are giving me a pat answer to try to make me not feel hurt, hurt or pain. And that is just really not going to create safety for vulnerability. So we don't want to be doing that for one another. Don't dismiss or minimize the thoughts of other people. Um, don't talk over people. Don't embarrass, disgrace, or shame anyone. I mean, these should probably go without being said, but they can happen when we don't even realize it. And I do want to say what, what can be hard is let's say somebody shares something and it was meaningful to them, and then somebody else just kind of jumps in and goes to something else and doesn't even acknowledge what's been said or shared. That feels hard. That feels very dismissive. So those are the types of behaviors we don't want to do. Again, you have small group leaders that are helping to facilitate this, but actually it's all our responsibility, okay? Okay? This is all our responsibility. Be aware of sensitive topics. We talked about this last week, so I'm not going to pound this drum, but certain topics, especially in this day and age, can be very divisive and combative. Be mindful of such topics and be sensitive to differing viewpoints and be careful how you navigate those. And remember, if we're making love primary, it's not about getting our point across, right? Because we're trying to love. Um, be mindful of everyone. Be conscious not to mop, monopolize the conversation. We want everybody participating. Listen deeply and respectfully. Um, and then participate as both a listener and a speaker. And lastly, minimize distractions. Um, those phones. Can you, you, you've all been in a group where you're, t so you're, or maybe you're the person, you're sharing something and somebody's looking at their phone doing something else. Gosh, that feels really hard. <laughs> like, are you not paying attention to me? We know that there will th be things that come up, but as much as possible, please minimize distractions. So, sound good? Okay, can you guys commit to these things? Can you outside commit to these things? <laughs> oh, I heard him. Um, all right, so all that to say, we want, our heart is for these groups to be a place truly where you feel like you can be vulnerable and share your real self. What's interesting, we were talking this morning as a leadership, and Stephanie, as she was praying, she was like, I remember when I first started at Abide, it wasn't actually called Abide at the time, but I started at Abide, and I was put in a group, and I had other friends at the study, but they were all in a different group. And I was put in a group with nobody I knew. And she said, I remember thinking, what the heck? This is going to be rough. And then now she would say they're some of her dearest, closest friends, and they're still in life together. And so I just encourage you, you can have that pit, in your, that pit moment in your stomach where you go, <gasps> Is this going to be what I'm in for the rest of the, the year? And I encourage you to press through that because I think God is in the midst of all of that. I also want to say, before I share who's in what small groups, these have been prayed over really significantly. Like, I care deeply. Sorry, again, getting emotional. I care deeply about each person being in a group that I think would, that I hope and trust God is in moving them to that place and that they see they are loved and cared for. And so there's been a lot of thought that has gone into this. This is not willy-nilly, haphazardly put together. 
That doesn't mean that it will work just perfectly for everybody. In fact, I think God sometimes is working through the challenge of those groups and all that can arise. But I just want you to know that these are, have been really thought over and prayed over. And so I'm trusting that God is in the midst of all of that and asking him to be. So um, also, before I share the groups, I just want to say I typed these in really fast, your names, so they might be spelled wrong, but hopefully you can tell it's you. <laughs> and I also, as I'm saying them, I may pronounce them wrong. So just cut me some slack on that, too. I want to do it right, but I may be wrong. So, um, uh, And that's part of honoring you, too. I think if we know one another's names and we know them properly, that's a way to love and care. So I'm just apologizing in advance if I don't have it yet. All right. I'm going to share the small groups. I'm going to ask the small group leader to, to just stand up here or stand on the patio if you're out on the patio so people can see you. We won't see everybody, but um, our first group is a vet and Mary's group, um, and they'll be meeting in the high school room, which is across the patio on the left-hand side. And we have Teresa Karens, Heidi Kane, Ani Sellers, Stephanie White, Jody Ricketts, Nancy May, Sandra Grant, Deborah Cowles, and Morgan Aboud. So you guys will be in the high school room. Um, and then, uh, let's see, our next group is Terry and Ann's group. You guys will be in the junior high room, again, across the patio on the right side. And in that group, we have Sherry Fenley, Lynn Supernaw, Nancy Wilson, Sydney Egner, Carolyn Erickson, Joni Clayton, Chris Welch, Debbie Farr, Sandy Moody, Karen Dort, Wendy Johnson, and Rose Huntington. I just realized you guys didn't even stand up. Sorry. Sorry. That was my bad. I didn't even give you space to stand up. So, okay, so sorry, we'll go back. <laughs> oh, so my bad. All right, Yvette and Mary. Back there is Mary, and back there is Yvette. Hands up. Hi, there we are. Okay, that's Yvette and Mary. You'll be in the high school room. Thank you, you guys. All right, now back to Terry and Ann's group. Terry and Ann, will you guys stand up? Terry's not here. There's Ann, and that is their group. They'll be in the junior high room. Thank you. I will now create space for you guys to do that. All right, Diane and Sherry's group. Sherry's back in the back there. Raise your hand. Is Diane here? I don't see her. Okay. They will be in the office patio, which is right behind me. And we have Nancy Carpenter, Deb Guthrie, Terry Lawson, Kathy Arts, Gail Fortier, Jean Humphrey, and Joyce McAdams. So they'll be out on the office patio. All right, next group. We have Janet and Janice's group. Janice, where's Janet? Janet... There she is. There's Janet. And then Janice is, oh, she's our AV person, but she's out elsewhere right now. Okay. Um, and this, they're going to be on the main patio, so you're just going to grab chairs and circle up on the patio for now. We'll have a contingency plan when weather doesn't work for that. Um, Stacy Healy, Tracy Kelmdenny, Christy Cochran, Nancy Zingrabe. I don't know how you say that one. Liz Holman. Uh, see, Liz, I did put it. It's not S. It's Liz with an S. Sorry, people. Okay, Cody Miller, Judy Fullman, Elizabeth Peckinpah. All right, you guys will be out on the main patio. And then next we have Diane's group. Diane, where are you? There's Diane. That's Diane. Um, you guys will be in the living room, which is right behind this panel here. That's Joyce Marimoto, Janelle Wiley, Judy Rindall, Sue Beck, Diane Koch, Hazel Deshawn Smith, Doreen Davis Fuhr, Sharon Canfield, and Lynn Brown. You guys will be in the living room. All right, next group is Cindy's group. Where's Cindy? There's Cindy. This is Cindy Astor. You guys will be in room one. By the way, when I start saying these rooms, they're all along the hallway there, and they all have room numbers above, so you can find the room fairly easy. Easily. Uh, room one, and that's Nancy Brown, Kim Adams, Mary Paulson, Nancy Moeller, Julie Lloyd, Gretchen Miller, Becky Dombrowski, Vicki Dimitrik, Barry Brown, and Wendy Turney. I feel like this could be like a tongue twister. <laughs> so that's Cindy's group. Okay, this is Sue's group. Sue Orth, where are you? This is Sue Orth. She's one of our new leaders. All right, she'll be on the main patio. Um, again, circling up out there, finding a space. Um, and then that group, Wendy Enkema, Judy Brixey, Donna Hiltz, Sherry Petrilli, Mary Lee Schneider, Liz Barman, Lynn George, Adriana Forcher, Suzanne Reinhardt, and Sandy Stransky. So you guys will be out there on the patio. All right, Karina and Nancy's group. Nancy Otis, Karina Van Cleve. There's Nancy Otis. This is Karina Van Cleve. And they'll be in room six. And we have Linda Patton, Lauren Brooks, Anita Rager, Tammy Harakas, Geneva Franco, Trisha Reger, Emily Pennington, Kelsey Claypool, and Lauren Lopez Galvez. And those will be in room, room six. Some of these names are pretty fun, I just have to say. 
Um, okay, then we have Amy and Phyllis's group. Where's Amy Brown? Back in the back, and is Phyllis here? There's Phyllis, all right. And they'll be on the main patio as well, finding a place to circle up. And we have Stacia Lowe, Kim Clark, Vicki Riedel, Terry Lay, Jennifer Mansour, Nicole Hill, and Bri Brian, Brian, Maureen, oh, Mo Vander Hayden. Okay, so that group will be on the main patio circling up. A lot of groups, huh, people? <laughs> and then I think this may be my last one. Um, no, it is? No, it's not. Okay, two more. All right, we have Tina Drake. Where's Tina? And then Ginger Nix. Is Ginger here? Oh, there's Ginger right there in front. Ginger, what kind of... Come on, stand up. That's Ginger. <laughs> she did this. Oh, no, you're okay. Okay, so this is Tina and Ginger. We have Mary Lee Pichelle, Grace Kim, Betty Amoa, Claire Foucher, Allie Bray, Teresa Ruberson, Donna Toberty, Michelle Vale, Pam Cashin, and Wendy Cleaver. All right, and that's in room four or five. So it's, there's a partition, but we're going to open up the partition. You can enjoy the whole room. All right. And then we have, last but definitely not least, we have Nancy Bauerline and Debbie Chan, and their group will be in room seven. And we have Carrie Coleman, Anna Jeffers, Allie Pearson, Dina Michael, Nicole Egner, Jackie Lee Beard, Donna McDonald, Rebecca Mayetta, Katie Rowley, and Erica Mary Hugh. So that's our, thank you, yay. Whoo, right? So exciting. All right, so before I send you off to your small groups, I am going to just let you know of a couple announcements. Actually, I have a several <laughs> announcements, so bear with me. First is, we would love to have some people help make coffee in the mornings. So we do it on a rotation basis, and we would love to have more coffee makers. So if you have any inclination to be a coffee maker, it means coming just a little bit early to make that coffee, please let Yvette Kratzberg know, or me, either one of us. Um, we would love, as has been mentioned, and you'll experience this next week, we have something we call the spotlight, where some, excuse me, somebody shares their story a little bit. Um, not their story, just what God's been up to in their life for three to five minutes. And it's no pressure, really chill and low-key, right? We're going to make it chill and low-key this year. Um, and if, if you would be open to sharing, uh, Diane McCardle, Diane, you can raise your hand again. She would love to have you share, um, and you can go and talk to her about that. Um, but we want this to be something where anybody and everybody will come up and share what God's been doing in your life. It could be a song that's moved your heart. It could be anything. So we would love to just hear from you guys. And that's, again, I shared this last week, but it's one of my most meaningful things during our time on Wednesday morning. So we have Abide Service Day. It actually happens in the spring, and this year it'll be on February 9th. And I'm looking for somebody who will coordinate service day, and I'm also looking for a team of people who will s help with service day. This can't happen without some help, and so if you have anything on your mind and heart where you're feeling a little bit like, yeah, I would love to serve, that would be a great way to serve, to help us all serve. Um, so you can come talk to me about that if you have any interest in that. Um, we are going to do a photo directory with Avide because, again, we want people to feel known, and so seeing people's photos and putting that with a name helps. The way we're going to do that is I'm actually going to send out an email to all of you, and I'm going to ask you to send an email, not text, email and storm your picture. She'll end up putting the directory together, but here's my threat. If you don't actually email a picture, I may choose a ch very strange picture to put above your name, Okay. <laughs> So you're going to want to email me a picture, and you get to choose it. It can be the one where you're, like, doing your glam shot, whatever you want, okay? Um, so just email that to Anne. I'll send you an email as a reminder. I know all of you have your glam shots, huh? Huh? Yeah. Okay. So that will help, and then she'll put it together. It will be a paper directory where, and an electronic directory. I think we'll do paper, too. Yeah, why not? We'll do paper and electronic so you can see people's faces with their names. All right. Lastly... Um, Joy Young would be coming up here, but wasn't able to. Um, she is our director of uh, children's, and if I can find my notes, she just wanted to me to make a quick announcement. I have a slide, but last year we had a made an announcement about uh, women helping in volunteer for our blessing ministry, which is our ministry for moms of young children, and that happens on Tuesday mornings. 
And when we asked last year, we had you guys came out in spades. We had so many people offer to volunteer, which was amazing. Well, we need that again. Um, if you have any inclination to hold babies, which, by the way, they say that keeps you young. I say that all the time. But they say holding babies keeps you young, right? Um, if you want to hold babies or actually be with zero to four-year-olds, you wouldn't necessarily be the baby holder, I'm just saying. We just need volunteers. Um, you could talk to Joy. Her, uh, her email is up there. But it can be that you do it every week. It could be every other week. Or you could even be a sub to plug in when they need it. So we could use that help. Um, it actually helps. It's a way to love moms of young children in our community. And those of you who have been through that stage of life know what a gift that is to be able to gather with other moms of young children. And so we would love your help in that. Um, and I think with that, I think that's everything. So I am going to pray, and then we'll go to our small groups. Father, uh, as we think about all of these things, like we talk about the ground rules and just what we bring to these small groups, Father, we acknowledge that we actually, in many of these things, we feel um, ill-equipped or we feel um, like we have deficits or we feel like these things may be hard. Um, we ask that by the power of your spirit that we would be able to be these kinds of people, that we would be able to love well, that we would make that primary that we would be looking out for the interests of others, that we would be sharing our real selves, that we wouldn't be trying to fix other people, that we would be a place of safety. Lord, I pray that you would protect confidentiality in our groups. I just pray that you would do a work there. Lord, I do also pray that where people may experience one another as strangers, that they will quickly become friends and then ultimately experience one another as family. Father, we even acknowledge in that that it's by your spirit we gather. It's by your spirit that we're in fellowship with one another. And so we need you to do that kind of work too. Um, Father, we think of this Ephesians prayer that Paul had. And we do ask that you would truly allow us to be rooted and grounded in your love, that we would be finding power and strengthened by the power of your spirit. Would you do this kind of work here in us as we gather on Wednesday mornings? We pray this in your name. Amen. All right, go and enjoy your small group. And I encourage you to make your way quickly there so that you have as much time as possible in those groups.